In February, he knew COVID-19 was dangerous. You just breathe the air. That's how it's uh, passed. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. This is deadly stuff. But he intentionally downplayed it. I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. In March, he didn't want to be held responsible for it. Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. He told governors they were responsible for getting ventilators and protective equipment, setting off bidding wars, state against state, city against city. He peddled an unproven remedy, hydroxychloroquine, which the FDA warned against. There was no national response, no national standards. Governors and mayors haphazardly closed businesses and schools. In April, he suggested more quack remedies. And then I see the disinfectant. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? He pushed governors to reopen states earlier than the Centers for Disease Control thought wise. The CDC warned him such reopenings could mean a significant risk of resurgence of the virus. In May, he continued to minimize the threat. This is going to go away without a vaccine. It's going to go away and it's, uh, we're not going to see it again. He blamed the increasing number of cases on excessive testing. We have more cases than anybody in the world. But why? Because we do more testing. In June, he suggested slowing the testing down. Testing is a double-edged sword. When you, test the, when you do testing to that extent, you're gonna find more people, you're gonna find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. In July, he muzzled CDC experts. The Trump administration directed hospitals to stop reporting key coronavirus data to the nonpartisan CDC and instead report it to HHS, which falls under the supervision of the administration. He demanded schools ignore CDC guidelines and plan to fully reopen in the fall, even threatening to cut off funding if schools refused. His political appointees pressured the CDC to change warnings and scientific conclusions they didn't like. He lied about how well America was doing relative to the rest of the world. I think it's the opposite. I think we have one of the lowest mortality it's rates true, in the sir. world. When extra unemployment benefits ended July 31st, he didn't push to extend them. A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying, that's true. And you ha it is what it is. In August, he peddled hydroxychloroquine again, even after the FDA revoked its emergency authorization in June. He blamed the, quote, deep state for making it difficult to test vaccines. He suggested the FDA was trying to deliberately delay treatments until after Election Day. In September, he claimed a vaccine could be available before the election. We remain on track to deliver a vaccine before the end of the year and maybe even before November 1st. We think we could probably have it sometime during the month of October. He continued holding campaign rallies where many went without masks. I'm, uh -huh. I'm on a stage that's very far away, uh -huh. and so I'm not at all concerned. He blamed the mounting number of COVID deaths on blue states. If you take the blue states out, we're uh, at, at a level that uh, I don't think anybody in the world would be at.
His lackeys pressured the CDC to remove language on its website confirming that airborne droplets could transmit the virus before being forced to reverse the change. At the first presidential debate, he mocked Joe Biden for wearing a mask. I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. He didn't want his White House staff to wear masks. He criticized a White House reporter for wearing a mask. He held White House events where people did not wear masks or maintain social distancing. In October, the White House itself became a hotspot for the disease. Trump himself tested positive for coronavirus and was airlifted to Walter Reed Medical Center for emergency treatment. When he announced he'd be discharged, he told the American people, Don't be afraid of it. He then tweeted, COVID is far less lethal than the flu. Both Facebook and Twitter flagged this as misinformation. Despite all the infections, the White House did no contact tracing and declined the help of the CDC to do so. And the White House still did not require masks because according to the deputy press secretary, everyone needs to take personal responsibility. The United States is supposed to be a world leader. The president of the United States is supposed to keep Americans safe. But America has suffered the worst rate of coronavirus deaths among all advanced countries, a death toll equal to 9-11 every three days. And as a recent Cornell study confirmed, Trump's blatant disinformation has been the largest driver of COVID misinformation in the world. This is not leadership. It's pure malicious incompetence, and it's killing Americans.